hundreds of men all standing close together, waiting, queuing for food. There is no concept of social distancing. Hundreds of men in France. The plight of the African and Arabic men in France. France hasn't taken them in. It's incumbent on the British public to feel sympathy for these people in order for us to open our arms and accept these men, or mainly men, who have spent the best part of three to four years exploiting a Syrian refugee quote-unquote crisis for their own benefit. And here we have the propaganda machine of the BBC with the sad little music in the background trying to make you feel sorry for a bunch of men who have traversed the European continent and have squatted in Cali for God knows how long, most of whom could quite easily go back, most of whom have rejected uh, trying their luck anywhere else, most of whom have set their sights on jumping on a boat or breaking into a lorry to enter the UK illegally. The French authorities don't kick them out. Nothing gets done about these people who have no intention of applying for asylum in France. Nothing at all. Why is that? All we get is wankers at The Guardian or dickheads at the BBC with the sad piano music in the background. Hundreds of men. Hundreds of men. So what? Why is it incumbent on us to take in hundreds of men? <laughs> for the sake of their own health and behind me as I look away from the queue, there are tents clustered all over the sand dunes here and people living right on top of each other. Go home then. Profoundly unsanitary situation. They're in France! <laughs> I'm on a journey through migrant experiences in Calais and in London. And for people who are already living on the margins, the Arrival of the coronavirus has been nothing short of catastrophic. There's hundreds of migrants here in Calais hoping to make it to the UK. <laughs> we filmed here nearly three weeks. What is this man? <laughs> weeks into the French lockdown. And while the French government has started to move some of them to shelter, not all want to go because they're afraid they'll be detained once the crisis is over and any chance of getting to Britain will vanish. I'm sorry, what is this? They're afraid of being detained and any chances of getting to the UK will vanish. Their intention is to enter the UK illegally. And for the other half that haven't got that in mind, they're trying to apply for asylum when they don't have a claim. What is there? I mean, how much more simplistic could this get? <laughs> they shouldn't be there! As soon as one has got the, the virus, I mean the virus runs everywhere, you know, and very fast. So look at them, and, it, and there are three of them, I mean, they are very close from to each other. I'm sorry, why should we feel sympathy for a bunch of men, mainly men, who refuse to go to one of these places that the French government is offering them to avoid contracting this virus? And the way that this was worded by that dickhead Fergal, or whatever he's called, hundreds of men, I mean, what a dick, you know, the way it was worded, it's as if they're wanting confirmation that they will be dropped off right where they were picked up after this is all over. Talk about self-entitled. I'll tell you what Mr. Macron should be doing right about now. He should be giving them a choice. You can enter our areas to avoid said virus, if that's what you're concerned about, or you will be deported immediately. Why won't he do that? Why will they not do that? <laughs> Makes you think. Have some pity. You wouldn't do this to a dog, would you? So you're doing it to human beings who are fleeing the war. Well, uh they're not fleeing war though, are they? The majority of people there are from Africa. And a good portion of the other ones that aren't from Africa are from several Arabic countries, Islamic countries that are not Syria. And on top of that, I love this propaganda from these dickheads who are actually at fault for why there are so many people there for a few reasons. One being, of course, the more that you give these people food and aid and whatnot, you are prolonging their stay. But second of all, people like him, people like the mainstream media, like all these lefties with the baldy feminists, you know, blue streaks and whatnot, 
They all cried about the plight of the refugees and the migrants and you were racist and whatnot and far right and a Nazi if you didn't accept them all. They did not differentiate the difference between Syrian refugees and migrants. So they allowed more and more and more migrants to pile on in alongside Syrian refugees. So now we're in a position where it's impossible to not only differentiate the two of them, but now there's too many of them. So whose fault's that? Is it the people that entice them all over here for peace and love and humanitarian Nambi Pambi progressive bollocks? Or is it our fault for not letting them in and treating them like dogs apparently? <laughs> hmm. I'm ashamed of being French. They've been raped, they've been assaulted, they've been, they've been ransomed. Many of the raping. They've been tortured. I'm saying tortured. Oh yeah. Think of this world. From Darfur, Afghanistan, the Middle East, most people would only speak to us off camera. You're afraid of the virus. Oh, Syria is Afghanistan. We cannot do anything. I'm looking at the conditions you're living in and you're, you're all crowded on top of each other. It, it's dangerous. Yes, it's, it's all our fault. Really dangerous. White man bad, am I right? Too much difficult in here. There is no tank, there is no good food, there is no any drink water, no cloth, no shoe. Too much problem in the jungle. But even if they get to London in lockdown, Migrants will find that the asylum process, like so much else, is stalled. And there's little hope of getting any work in this climate. <laughs> Wait a minute. Asylum seekers can't work. Refugees can't work. Am I, or am I missing something here? Migrants have the ability to work. So they come over here with their false asylum applications and then go on to work. How does that work? Maybe it's different down in England. I don't know. One undocumented migrant from Africa had been Undocumented means illegal immigrants. And he's from Africa. What part of Syria is Africa? What part of the African continent does Syria lie, Mr. Fergal? <laughs> been surviving on odd jobs and help from friends. We're desperate. We have no way of paying rent. They're both men. Can't get anywhere. There are no places offering accommodation. No one giving you money. What would you say to them? I would tell the migrants in <laughs> the fucking men. Calais not to think it gets easier, not to have that much hope. Just because you're not in the camp doesn't mean that you are going to be treated human. It's just the same circumstances. Treated human, you entitled little shit. Of course, while we're getting slaps on the wrist for walking our dog twice a day, or sitting in our front gardens, the Abdul, uh, Abdul sorry, and his brethren, or Bamboo Beam from Africa, are jumping on their boats and being picked up. Quite the thing. As we can see here, two different articles, but uh, rather telling. Border force intercepts four boats carrying 72 crossing English Channel off Kent and Sussex coast. And then this one says the border force picks up, no sorry, intercepts and picked up. You know, what is the difference? at this point because it's not even the words that should be slapped into these uh, article titles. Interception, as I've said before, implies prevented from getting from your to your destination. Prevent From A to B, you've been prevented from getting to B. And as for being picked up, well, that tells you all you need to know. I mean, it's one short of rescue. <laughs> what doesn't occur after the fact, though, is uh, returning them right back to where they started from. We're expected to believe that they've obtained boats from uh, invisible smugglers. They start traversing the channel illegally, only to then be stopped and halted by the border force, who then in turn take them here anyway. And, you know, so many people do question this narrative, and for the most part, people just don't give a shit anymore about their sympathy attempts. But the fact of the matter is, this is still occurring in the background. And it's the farce that the public have to endure. We've got a Tory government who pretend that they're angry that this is occurring. What have they done about it? What did Baldy Javid do when he was in charge? Mister, this is simply unacceptable. Nothing. What did Theresa May do? Nothing. What was Boris Johnson doing? Nothing. The first two boats intercepted at half six in the morning were carrying 22 men and eight women. Well, that's okay then. And we're who identified as Iraqi, Iranian and Syrian nationals. What part of Syria is Iraq and or Iran? The third boat intercepted, the third boat stopped and met, the third boat we met, 
three hours later with 13 men. Said they were Iranian or Iraqi. Well, they said that. Well, that's okay then. The fourth vessel was carrying 25 men and four women. Well, that's okay then. We identified as Iranian or Iraqi. What part of Syria is Iran? What part of Syria is, is Iraq? All individuals were taken to Dover. So you have aided and abetted these smugglers that they supposedly obtained the boats from. You are aiding and abetting and encouraging this to continue. If you expect this to believe that the government have got nothing to do with this whatsoever, then effectively they're still helping these smugglers. You are doing the smugglers dirty work for them. <laughs> the Home Office... Uh, wait, sorry. Here we go. Here's the I'm very angry routine. What a shock. Tom Eastall, the Home Office's Director for Crime and Enforcement, said those facilitating illegal crossings were breaking the law. Oh, I'm very angry. I'm very angry. <laughs> What are you doing about it, Tony? What are you doing about it, mate? Nothing. The only people that are facilitating illegal crossings is our own border force. The Home Office said this attempted to enter the UK in small boats. Attempting. Yeah, a lovely word choice there. Attempting. Because they're, they're, they're not successful in their attempts. Because our border force are meeting them and taking them here. So they've taken it upon themselves. It's, you know what I mean? Uh... Sorry, to for generally from France. Well, they're generally from France. Where else are they going to be from? Like, uh, the French police had stopped more than ninety migrants and risking their lives. So oh, yeah, we're working around the clock each day, and the French law enforcement agencies to arrest and dismantle organized crime gangs in France. Organized crime gangs, aye. Yeah. Extra police patrols are being deployed on French beaches on a daily basis. <laughs> we're doing a good fucking job, aren't they? Peace.